kama kawa king of the street back in the street doing what you always do best manzia kumpa subscribe like share comment hashtag road 5k subscribers guys i'm so happy for whatever that you're doing to our channel i'm sorry I'm not that consistent but but just bear with me but i'm back and i'm like there's a video that i shot about serial business whether that's what i'm dealing with right now oh we're in serial business and first of all a disclaimer i'm not on a bad note kuna wase wanaongea about serial businesses and they are just content creators they're not in this business but basically and personally i'm in this business and we're doing it and we thank god for it by the way so we've been i've been getting so many questions about the amount of capital that you need how to do pest control how to locate a business and how to do bookkeeping by the way if you're serious into this business someone will always tell you that if you want to have the best business go to nyamakima best serial business go to nyamakima actually that person is is giving you an idea but in a way he or she is trying to mislead you first of all do research what do i mean when i say do research do research about where to get those serials for example there's so many markets in this country where you can get those serials first of all before deciding where to get those serials look at location of your shop you let me tell you the truth it will always set us free no supplier will deliver goods to your shop for free you will have to pay for the goods so basically when you look for a shop or where you want to locate your business make sure that it's not that far away from where your shop is reason being number one, to avoid inconveniences number two, to reduce the fare because the higher the fare the less the profit margin the higher the fare the less the profit margin so first of all understand where to get those things then let me just go back to go to shop location where do you locate your shop first of all you have to understand the market your target market are the people living in that area number one understand first their capability or their purchasing power for example you might live in a place where people are densely populated like let's say for example a ghetto it has so many people but now the problem comes in when it comes to you trying to allocate the prices of your commodities and the profit margin it's also important to note the profit margin when it comes to pricing it might give you a bit of challenges but now make sure you do it smartly take your time to do research about the area and first of all about pricing don't it's good to compare the prices with your neighbors your competitors that is but now as we've always done in our in our business eh? we don't reduce prices so as to impress the customers first of all if your prices are a bit higher you know you won't know where your other competitor is getting his or her goods from you might be having different suppliers with different prices so the moment you start lowering your prices so that your competitor can have much higher prices as compared to your, to, to your prices of course sir, it's okay you'll attract customers but now come to understand one thing the profit margin that you'll be having will be so minimal and that means also you will find it difficult for you to pay for that rent for that shop number one profit margin when it's minimal it will give you a hard time to pay for that shop remember that shop needs rent it is supposed to pay for tokens you need to pay for maintenance of the shop and you should not put that profit margin to be so high to an extent you're going to make the customer run from a shop just do something that is much average, uh, average then try to explain to your customers why you're selling your products in that manner for example in our shop we will say hello been set 200 shillings per kg 200 shillings per kg of which to some people it might be so expensive but now let me explain why we're selling it at 200 and others may be, might be selling it at 170 160 per kg First of all in our shop we always make sure that when you sell to you those yellow beans we always make sure that we've cleaned them first 
Like your work will only be like taking those yellow beans from our shop direct to your cooking pot because we've already done the cleaning. So understand how to do something extra that your, your competitors are not doing. Be a bit unique. Be a bit unique from what they're doing. That will attract customers to a shop. Then explain to your customer, I'm doing this because of this. I'm selling it at 200 shillings because I've done an extra service of which our fellow competitors are not doing. Be confident while you're explaining something to your customer so that even they'll understand that whatever you're doing, you're doing it confidently and you know what you're doing. You're not trying to guess. Mm. It's about location and stock and everything. So when you want to, to get things from the market, make sure you locate a place or a supplier who is nearer to your shop. It will be a bit better for you because it will reduce transport charges and everything. So another thing that I've been asked, how much capital do you need? By the way, right now, cereals are a bit expensive. You don't say they're a bit expensive. This means you need to have like roughly 100 to 150 thousand Kenyan shillings when you're starting this business. Basically, why do I say 150,000 or 100 to 150,000? You have to pay rent. Rent it comes with rent and deposit. That's, that is if you're in Nairobi. For you to start a small cereal shop, 150, 100 to 150,000. Uh, let, me, let me now break it down for you. Rent. Let's say a good place you'll get like 10,000 that's rent only, so times two rent, one month, another month deposit, that's 20,000. But there are some shops where you're supposed to pay rent for two months and deposit. So you pay two months in advance. So that, that will be like, you'll pay like 10,000 deposit, 10,000 rent, that's 20,000, plus two other months, that's 10, 10, so that will be 40,000. Already, you're remaining with one 10,000. Then there's partitioning of that shop, of which, it will take you also some money, partitioning of that shop. Let's give it 10,000. We're already at, at 50,000, we already spent at 50,000. Then another thing is, um, what, will, what will I talk about now? After partitioning the shop, you'll have to go fetch your stock. Stock for a good shop, it might take around 80,000, minimum 80,000. Transportation, let's say 1,000 or 2,000, depending on where you're getting your goods from. Let's say give it 3,000 maximum. That's transportation of those goods to, to a place. Then another thing, you have to buy some petty things like the sieving, sieving, oh, how do you call it? It's called kichung or something. You need to have it. Another thing that you're supposed to have, you need to have the price tags. When I say price tags, I mean these price tags. You need to have them. Uh, we need to have minor things like staplers in the shop, so we need to buy such things. We need to have like packaging bags, packaging bags, you need to have them also. So they'll, those minor expenses, they might add up to 20,000, 10, 10, 10 to 20,000. Now, at least you've had your stock to your shop, you've had the price tags. Now we also have things we call pallets. Pallets, you'll always use them too. Like you lay them down, then you put your cereals on top of them. Basically, the importance of that pallet is to prevent those sacks of cereals from absorbing water. Because if you stay ground at the ground floor, basically you'll get the some waters in the floor. So when you place your pallet, then you place your cereals on top of it. It will be a bit better for you. So now that's one thing. Then another thing you need to know how to display your shop. Proper display for shop. If you know how to display your shop, like this day you want your house to be so clean, so smart, so organized, the same thing you should do to your business. When your business is so much well organized, customers will be attracted to your shop very easily. Because when they just appear to your shop, the outlook on the outcome of what they see from that shop makes them attracted to you. Are you getting it? Another thing that I'm supposed to say, your appearance also. When, when a customer comes to a shop, if for example you're having your own home issues, don't bring them to your business. Don't bring them to your business. Home affairs, leave them at home. When you come to business, focus on that day. 
make your customers be happy and even be able to come back to a shop because of the way you're talking to them, how interactive you are, what you're saying to tell them, so that at least they can be like, hey, in a, in a, when I buy something from that shop, it becomes good. And oh, it's awesome. That guy, or that lady talks to me in a good manner that I love going back to that shop. So, by the way, let me tell you something. I started this shop, this business when I'm 26, and it's in Nairobi. So people like, you can't start a business while you're still young. Not really. Not really. We started ours when I was 26. And when I'm still 26. So there's nothing impossible. People have been asking me, how long will it, is that Kwanza, is that business profitable? It is profitable. But under one condition, if you've located a business in a place where people who stay in that area are able to purchase more from your shop, and they have better purchasing power. I think I've answered that. If they have better purchasing power, a shop will pick within the shortest time possible. Another question in conjunction to that. People have been like, how long should it take for me to at least know that my shop has picked? Basically, if you're doing proper marketing of a shop, within the first two months, that shop should be able to pay for its own rent and at least leave something to you petty thing, not that much, but at least it can sustain itself. And the best thing in business is make sure it's paying its rent. If it's paying its rent by the first two months, you're good to go. You're good to go. Another question that you've always asked, asked me, how do, you, how do you do stock taking? Now this is where bookkeeping comes in. Basically, I'm an accountant, a professional, most of you know that. Being an accountant, I always account for every coin in our shop, every shilling. That is, you should be having a, let me just show you something over here. You should be having something like this. I don't think if you see it properly. It's like a, you can't see it, but it's a portfolio. What do I mean by saying portfolio? A portfolio is where, where you subdivide that book of views, where you record the date, items sold, cages, amount, profit, and summary. So that portfolio enables you to record your trans daily transactions so easy. That is, when you buy, let's say for example, when someone buys from a shop, be sure you worth one kg, that's 200 shillings. What you're supposed to do is, you record date, let's say for example, date 2, July 2024, item sold, be sure one kg, Amount 200, profit let's say 36 or so 40 bob. That's a rough, a rough example. So do the same thing over and over again. So when at the end of the month you are able to record, but they should also having another book, another exercise book where you record your transactions daily, uh, not even sorry, your daily expenses. So that at the end of the month you're supposed to do the audit of that shop of yours. What do I mean by saying audit? You're supposed to record the total sales of that month, total profit, that's gross profit, without, without deducting expenses. So then deduct expenses from the entire shop, like buying such things like packaging bags, like even if you buy yourself lunch, so you're supposed to record like such a date, I bought myself lunch, so it should be under expenses. So for you to get net profit at the end of the month when doing your auditing, you'll have to deduct gross sales minus, Actually, let's say, gross profit minus expenses. Now you'll get net profit. From the net profit is where you are supposed to now to take some money to pay for your rent. After paying your rent, you can take the extra money. Do pay, pay, but then you're supposed to pay yourself. Pay yourself some little money out of it. Then the remaining amount, we, this is a thing we call in business, um, plowing back profit. Plowing back profit means the extra profit that you're getting, you're going to take it back to the shop. And how do you do it? You can increase the stock. Let's say, for example, you've been restocking Pishori 25 kgs. Now what you're supposed to do, you can just improve, let's say, Next time you stock 35 kgs, 40 kgs, 50 kgs, 60 kgs. With the time, after first year, your shops will have picked so well. Only if you're doing 
the right thing at the right time selling the best quality to your shop because our, our street thing serial shop says the slogan is we value quality over quantity we serve the best so basically know to treat your customers very well and you'll never regret we've been in this game and we thank god we learned the hard way but we're here to educate you to at least learn more from us something that you're supposed to know know how to do marketing of your business actually most of you have known us through youtube tiktok those two platforms how do you market your business do proper proper branding after doing proper branding if you show what you're supposed to do next is to do the marketing people around you should understand that and they should even know that you have a shop in that area how there's this tiktok platforms or even youtube platform where you can pay for ads within your locality that's number one number two you can be having offers let's say for example if people within your locality buy five kgs and above you can be doing to them free delivery just to entice your customers be smart another thing you can be like cleaning your cereal so well so that when someone comes to your shop gets attracted to what you're selling that's another part of marketing so it's so important when you decide that you're supposed to be serving your customers with the best do marketing do proper market research and everything so we appreciate you so much by the way and we'll always be humbled for your support and everything so what you're supposed to know also is know how to deal with your competitors fair competition not unfair competition healthy competition not unhealthy competition take your time to research what your customers need how you're supposed to serve them and everything so i'm very much humbled for your time for listening to what i've been telling you then keep on learning if in case you have any question about business about where to locate a business how to do anything about serial business my number is always on our social media platform and let me say it 0717 13 77 32 street serial shop 0717 13 77 contact us anytime we here to teach you people have been asking me if i have money should i just start a serial business it's kind of tricky to answer that question we only start a serial business if you love it because we started it because we loved it and you're like let's teach you because we can't feed the entire country alone but if we do it together people will be happy and they'll be served by great people and we'll always appreciate that you learned from us we're not, we're not yet there but we thank god for enabling us to unleash some knowledge to you people we love you so much we love you so much so other thing when it comes to porridge flour make sure you know what you need to do.